this video. video. Don't make me hurt you. What are you doing all day? What am I paying you for? Hi. Um, it's morning right now, it so is. I'm good saying good morning. Good morning. Ay, ay, ay. You are difficult to work with sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I own a translation company, and in a moment of weakness, I hired my sister to brilliance. I think is what you to mean. translate <laughs> things for me. And some days, I think that was a great choice. It was a great choice. Tell me a little bit, Mary, about what you do. What do you do? <laughs> what, is this? what are you doing all day? What am I paying you for? Okay, I am your translation slash office manager. I make the magic happen. Is that what I'm paying you to <laughs> That's do? That's what you're paying me to do, is make the magic happen. Thank goodness so, she's not watching YouTube videos all day. Right, no, um, I, Okay, so I'm the translation manager, I'm the office manager. I make sure that when the clients come in, that they are getting great customer service, that when the contractors or translators are hired, that they are quality, that they meet our standards, that the translation is done well, professionally, accurately, and that it gets back to the client in a timely fashion. So that's kind of the basic nuts and bolts of it. Um, so yeah, that's mostly what I do. And then I'd make sure that you know, that again, all the translators are getting stuff to the proofreaders on time, the proofreaders are getting back to the, the translation manager on time, that the notarization is happening, that if it needs an apostille, that that's going to happen, that we have, that we've given the client a deadline. All right. So, so I want to have a destination wedding. Okay. Let's be clear. I'm already married. But I keep thinking maybe <laughs> I can shake this guy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Destination weddings are a thing that people like to do. So let's yeah. let's pretend that I want to go to Bora Bora for my destination wedding, which is a fact. But I was born in Texas, but Bora Bora, they speak French. And so they don't believe that I was born because they can't read my birth certificate. Got it. Okay, so you need help with that. I need help. Let me help you with your destination wedding. Okay. I can do that for you. So what we would do is you would submit your document to us, preferably through our website, texantranslation.com, upload it there and let us know what you need because Bora Bora should have information for you that says we need a translation, a certified translation, Okay. for example. And so what we will do is we will, again, find the appropriate translator and get the translation for you, but... We will also provide it in a way that is the most helpful for you. For example, we will always provide a PDF copy of the translation, but some people need a printed copy and they're not able to print it themselves. Fine. We can do that for you also. We can print that copy for you. Some places need that copy notarized. So not Bora Bora, but like the DMV, for example, if we're translating your French uh, driver's license, the DMV wants a notarized copy of the translation. Okay, we can do that. We have an in-house notary, not a problem. Also, if you need an apostille, the translation has to be notarized. And so for Bora Bora, you might need an apostille. I'm still confused. Okay, I don't sorry. understand what it is that I'm supposed to do. I have my birth certificate okay. from Texas. And and I what does it mean to submit it online? What do okay. I what am I doing? Okay, so you go to our website and there's a blue button on the home page that says upload document for quote. Click on that and there's a form for you to fill out. Okay. It gives us the information we need. Okay. Okay. It tells us what language it's in, tells us what language How it is it to know? go into. I have to put that yes, in. Yes, yes. Gotcha. There, there are four fields you are filling out. Okay. okay. So it'll ask you what language is your document in, what language is it going into, how many pages is it? Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. So um so you're filling out this form giving us the information that you have. And then we receive that information and we'll turn around and we will, through your email, send you a quote through QuickBooks. And it will say, okay, we're going to charge you this much for this. We're going to charge you this much for this. We're going to charge you this much for this. And when you receive that, there's also a button on that that will say review and pay. So you look at it, you click the button, you pay, and then QuickBooks tells us, hey, that person paid. Bora Bora lady paid. I have another question. Why oh, are you so many questions? How yes. do I pay? That's what I'm telling you. Okay. There's a, <laughs> you click on the review and pay, and then you pay online. You can just put your credit card information on in online. It's secure. It is very secure. But if you are not a computery person and you don't like doing things online, or if you're just a more people person, we have an office. We're in our office. 
come to our office and we can take the payment. Yes, we can take the payment right here. We can take payment over the phone if that works better for you. You can write us a check. We had someone mail us a check the other day. So we can take slow. Yeah, it is, but it works. Um, So we can do it kind of whatever works best for you. Okay. And then, like I said, for Bora Bora, you would probably need a notarized hard copy. So once we have finished the trend, once you have paid online or in our office or wherever, we get that translation done for you. We'll send you a PDF copy through your emails and your electronic copy of the translation. So you have that for your records. Mm-hmm. And then you can either come pick up the, the notarized hard copy or we can mail it to you again, whatever is your preference. Um, or some people are getting say a university transcript translated and they need a sealed copy of the translation sent directly to the university. Mm, okay, yeah, we'll do yeah. that. I've got a daughter going to cut it all official transcripts. Yes. Sealed, sealed. Stamp. Right. And so we can send it straight to the university if that's what you want us to do. Okay, that's so, great. Yeah, so that was a little off topic of Bora Bora, but yeah. Yeah, get me to Bora Bora. Okay. Okay. So so <laughs> so you have translated my my birth certificate mm-hmm. and you're putting a certification on it of some yes. kind. Yes. The translator is saying I am qualified to translate this document. To the best of my ability, it is accurate and true and complete. And so then they sign that. And if it's for a, if it needs to be notarized, then they're signing it in front of our in-house notary, who will then. Um, okay, so let's talk about what a, what is a notary then, because uh, I feel like people don't really always understand what it means to have something notarized. What's happening when a notary notarizes? What are they? What's the magic that's happening there? What are they doing? That, that you have to go in front of them and do it. Right. So it's, again, it's not magic magic, but um, so a notary is just really all they are is just a third party, an objective third party that says, okay, I've seen this person's identification card that has their signature in it. I am watching them sign this this document. Yep. That's the same signature. Picture and, matches the face. Right. Exactly. And then they put their stamp and sign it and then it's been notarized. It's just an objective third party, which is why... We have gotten from time to time people who come in whose translations have been rejected by whoever they were trying to give it to. And the reason is because someone translated their document and then they notarized their own translation. But if the notary is an objective third party, they can't notarize their own signature. That doesn't make any sense. So you cannot notarize your own translation. It is not done and no one will accept that. So if you have a translator who's like, oh yeah, I can notarize that for you. Don't believe them because it will be rejected. Now, we have an in-house notary. And so if you translate something, for example, then our in-house notary can then notarize your signature. But you are not going to notarize your own translation. It doesn't work that way. I won't then. Please. By all means. Okay. So then once it's notarized, Mm -hmm. so I've got, it's translated, you put the certification on it, the the translator signed it in front of the notary, the notary then said, yep, they did it right, and they signed it, and they put their little stamp on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what is an apostille? Because if I'm going to Bora Bora, Bora Bora told me, because I've done investigative research on this whole destination wedding thing. You were desperate to go to Bora Bora. (laughs) And they said it would need to be apostilled. Okay. So what does that mean? Okay. An apostille is something that the Secretary of State of the different states can put on a document issued by the state. So, for example, you have your birth certificate that was issued in Texas. It is issued by the state of Texas, and therefore, the Texas Secretary of State can put an apostille on that, authenticating the document and saying, yes, this uh, was issued by the state of Texas. Okay. 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 Now, your translation was not issued by the state of Texas per se. Right. No, it was issued by you. Right. But the notary who signed it is sort of a representative of the state of Texas. A Texas state official. A Texas state official. And so by them putting their stamp and signature on it, they have now made it an official Texas document. And so now we can go to the secretary of state and get that apostille on there. But here's something else to note about an apostille. Mm -hmm. If I have a birth certificate from Texas, and it needs an apostille, then the Texas Secretary of State has got to issue that apostille. If I have a marriage certificate from Connecticut, the Texas Secretary of State can do nothing with that, and they won't do anything with that. That would have to be mailed to the Secretary of State in Connecticut and have them put the the apostille on there. And actually, it's a very simple process. I literally, two days ago, Googled Connecticut Secretary of State apostille. The website came up, I clicked on it, 
Oh look, authentications and apostilles. Clicked on that, there's the form. Fill out the form, include it with my document, ship it off to Connecticut. And the Texas Secretary of State will do the same thing. If you yes. Will. During the pandemic, we were, and everything was closed down. The Secretary of State was closed down as well. So we were mailing documents in and providing a return envelope for them. And then they were mailing those apostille documents back to us. Gotcha. So, yeah. okay. So does now, it, do you understand the apostille now? Yes, it's just an authentication. It's just right. them saying, yes, this is an official document. Right. And now I'm not going to have a marriage certificate from Connecticut. I'm going to have a marriage certificate from Bora Bora. 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 Yeah. So, so now I've got my marriage certificate in French. And it needs to be legit in the U.S. Yep. So we, now we go backwards. Now huh? we go, yeah, I bring it of. back to you. Right. Now it's in French and you'll translate it for back me. into English. Now what uh -huh. if I, but it, so and now I'm married in Bora Bora and I think the U.S. will accept that. Yes. But I may need to have my marriage certificate given to, because I'm going to change my name, of course, not of course, but people do, and maybe I do. Maybe I really like this guy's last name because it's Exotic big and, and, and fancy yeah. and important and clearly connects me with wealth or something. And so I want that, you know, I want to claim that. Is it just the name connecting you to wealth or are you actually connected to wealth? Because that's I'm, that I'm interested in. If I'm going to Bora Bora, I'm pretty sure there's wealth involved. Good point. So... I'm going to need a lot of copies of that. Yes. Can I do that? Can you just make me more copies of my... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thing? Now, we do charge for copy, but uh, yeah, if you need 12 copies, we'll make you 12 copies. And can you notarize all of them? We can notarize all of them. Okay. Yes. And then I can just go change my name everywhere. And everywhere, right. This, you know, legitimately. I'm right. Not and, but you're right. Names. You're right. Play, things like getting your name changed mm -hmm. for if, if you've gotten married, that there are lots of places that you ha have to do that. The sec or the Social Security office, the DM or DPS, mm -hmm. you know, there are lots of places you have to go and provide mm -hmm. that proof. Mm -hmm. Same thing if you have a death certificate. We've done lots of death certificates. In Texas, someone was from Mexico, they died in Texas, but they want to be buried back in Mexico, and so we have to translate their, their death certificate back into Spanish mm -hmm. so that that body can be transported back there. Sure. And they need several copies, just like you need several copies of the death certificate for the bank, for the funeral home, for the right. probate whoever. the will. And all. Right, probate the will, exactly. Sure. So. sure. so you mentioned some translators are notarizing their own stuff you know they, they sign the certification statement and then just put their s notary seal on it and they kind of think they've notarized their, their document or their own signature but they really haven't um so that's kind of a red flag that that they maybe don't quite know all the rules all, all that they're supposed to be doing not supposed to be doing are there other red flags if i am trying to find a good translator maybe i don't have an identical twin who happens to do translation work not everybody does not everybody and, and more's the pity right but if I'm looking for a translator, how can I find one? What are some what are some clues or tips or things that I can look for that indicate to me that this is a good translator that that I can probably count on to give me quality work versus somebody who is maybe a little shadier or just doesn't really know what they're doing or maybe they they're bilingual but they just really aren't qualified to do what I'm asking them to do. Um, there are a few things that you can look for that are obvious to the naked eye, so to speak. First of all, if they're, whatever written correspondence you have with them, if you see grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. then that tells you that they're not proofreading their own work, even something as simple as an email that they're sending you. Wow. So they are So possibly, the email is kind of the job interview. It is a little bit. And so if they're being careless, even in an email, then perhaps they're going to be careless with your translation as well. Wow. If, um, if they say, oh yes, I can go into German, but they just studied German in high school, and they know it really well, but mm, maybe they don't know everything about Germany. And so really, they should be translating from German into English because English is their native language. Now, some people are great, and some people can go both ways, for sure. But more often than not, people should be translating into their native language. I only translate into English. I never translate into Spanish or into French or into anything else. Okay. Only into English. Okay. So that's another thing that you can look for is what are they claiming? And sometimes, and again, there are many people who are very qualified, but if they say, oh, I can do this language and this language and this language and this language, and I can go both directions with both of, with all of them, are you... Oh. Really? Are you really going to be that accurate and that careful in all of those mm -hmm. languages? Not many people have such a strong command of that many languages. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. Does that answer that question? For yeah, you? yeah. That makes sense. Um, 
And how about things like, uh, you know, I've, I've got a deadline or cost or um, how do those factors play into my decision? I see. Um, if the translator is really giving you rock bottom prices, like I can do this for $15 and I can get it back to you later today. Mm, you might want to be careful with that. Look at their credentials. Do they have experience translating? Do they have any kind of certification? Did they study language or translation in school? What is their background? How long have they been doing this? Um, because yeah, I mean, I know lots of people who are bilingual. Does that mean they're great translators? No, it just means they happen to know two languages. But are they really going to be able to write things down in a clear and concise manner that's accurate based on the original document and all the spellings right and all the grammars right? You know, you really want to look at that, their background a little bit too. Another thing to look for is if they're just going to meet you in the parking lot of Starbucks, for example, then maybe they're not as legit. If they're working out of the back of their car, then maybe they're only doing this part time mm -hmm. and they're not going to be dedicating the time necessary to really be a quality translator. And another thing to look for is their email signature. Again, that job interview that you mentioned, when you get that email, does their email signature say anything about their credentials or their profession or or does it just say their name mm -hmm. or is there a signature at all is their email address widebunny at yahoo.com that's not a professional email address and so maybe it should say you know such and such translations at yahoo.com you know that that gives you a sense that okay they do this on a regular basis and this is part of their livelihood and they're, and they're a professional and they're a professional yeah yeah okay yeah, that's great information because I don't want anything to jeopardize my Bora Bora wedding. No, nobody would. No. And uh, and the people who do good things for me, like give me great translations, might get invited to the wedding. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, I am looking forward to getting to go to Bora Bora. Um, and I am looking forward to getting to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, and I have planned this out in advance and have thought it through and I'm going to bring you my stuff with plenty of time. I bet though that there are times that people don't always either think far enough in advance to get things done with plenty of time or they find themselves in kind of a sticky situation for one reason or another. Have there been some times that you have had to kind of unstick somebody from a tough spot. Yes, and in fact, one of the ones we do quite a bit is someone has gone to the DMV or DPS, I guess, to get their driver's license. Mm -hmm. And they have a driver's license in French. And the DPS says, yeah, no, that has to be in English. And they're like, what? And they've made this appointment and now they're stuck. Mm -hmm. So just yesterday, we had someone come call us from DPS and say, here's my situation, can you help me out? Yes, we probably can come on into the office. So he comes in and we take a look at his, his French or Canadian, Canadian French driver's license. It's from okay, Quebec, Quebec, right? Yeah. And I've so, seen those, the blue ones, right? Yep. Yep. And so he comes in and says, I need to sit here and wait for you because I have to go right back. Uh, okay. So we did. He sat out in our office and... Our translator went back there and did it up for him real quick, and we got it notarized and, you know, and proofread. It was accurate. The The Canadian driver's licenses are not very complicated, and so we were able to get it turned around from in, in about 30 minutes. Now, that wow. is not our preference. We like to have a little more time, and um, generally speaking, we do like to take a, more time to get, to be sure that we're really being thorough. Sure. But with something like a, a Canadian driver's license, we can certainly do something simple like that in sure. a quick turnaround. Sure. And I imagine that if it's something short and, and straightforward that you've seen right. many times, it can be turned around more quickly right. than something that is lengthy and very original. Not a, like, not a, like the guy that called a couple weeks ago at about three o'clock on a Friday afternoon and said he had some documents that he needed translated from French to English, but he needed them today. We close at five. He needed them today. I know it was 15 to 20 pages. I said, no, that's physically impossible. No one can translate that for you. No one can do 15 to 20 pages from French to English in two hours. No. It is impossible. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not sure so, I can get them all scanned. Right, in two hours. In two yeah. Hours, be so, right, and right. Just to even typing the same words. Right, right. Never even mind. if we just transcribed it. Yeah, that would take more than two hours. Mm. So, yeah. We, we can do some magic. 
but magic has its limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me think. What else do I need to know for my Bora Bora? Let's see. I'm going to have to think about my outfits that I'm going to wear, but that's probably yes. not necessarily translation related. Um, but I can help you with that. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Outside of work. Sure. Oh, and I might want to borrow, there's a necklace you have that I might want to... Oh, yeah. No, I know the one. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you coming into the party room today, or the printer room. I don't know what we call this space. This is the, Conference the photo room? shoot space, the I'm not sure what this is yoga either. room. I don't know. Whatever <laughs> we do here. Um, but thanks for coming in and visiting with me a little bit. Um, of course. Yeah, it's nice to be It's kind of nice to hang out with sometimes, oh, I guess. Thanks. No. Go get back to work. I'm not mm. paying to sit here and chat with you. <laughs> <laughs>